In this video, I'm going to show you how I get uh, geopositioning exchange files. I think that's what it means, GPX files. Um, I download those and put them on my GPS device so that I can find geocaches. I'm going to show you how I do that. First, I start with Google Maps because Google Maps has a feature that is very useful. Uh, let's just pick a place at random. Uh, I'll go down here to Daejeon. That's a big city in Korea. I'm just going to right click anywhere around Daejeon. Doesn't matter where. Right click and it says, What's here? Well, it's going to tell me what's here. Dongso de ro. Well, I'm not really interested in what part of Daejeon it is. What I'm interested in is this part up here the coordinates. These are the north and east coordinates for that location. I'm going to copy them. I am now done with Google Maps. Uh, and uh, But I really like that feature, giving you the coordinates. So I'm going to go up to geocaching.com. Um, I'm already logged in. And what I'm going to do, I want to find the geocaches that are in the area of those coordinates that I got off Google Maps. So I come here and I'm going to choose play, play and hide and seek a cache. On this side where it says seek a cache, you can scroll down and you'll see a place where you can put in decimal format coordinates, just like I got off the Google Maps. So I'm going to right click and paste and just put in the latitude here. Right click and paste and put in the longitude and the default is 100 kilometers radius which is fine I don't care but you can change it I could just change it to 50 kilometers radius alright and there it is those are the geocaches around the coordinates that I had gotten off of Google Maps. The thing about the geocaching.com map is you cannot find, you can't just click and see coordinates on the map. Um, if they added that to this map, then I wouldn't need Google Maps at all. All right, so there it is. I want to find these, uh, these uh, geocaches. You can see all the little green dots. I found a few. A uh, smiley face there. I found one a long time ago. I was visiting a friend. Oh, another one. But uh, you can hold your mouse cursor there and just click on them. It'll give you some basic information. It was created by Silver Quill. Difficulty 2, terrain 1.5. It was hidden April of 2012. Cache size is small. Um, that's the code for it there. And if you want to read more, you can just click on that, and it'll take you to the page for this this particular cache. And there's a picture gallery. There are some pictures, which is useful. And my mouse is there. We go. Uh, you can also uh, see a description. There are no hints for this one, but if there if there was a hint, it would if it would be right here. Um, these are some of the most recent logs for this cache, but you don't need to do you don't need to do that for each one if you're going hunting. Just you need to put them on your GPS device, and that's what we're worried about. So come over here to the sidebar, and you'll see it says "Save as Pocket Query." What a pocket query is is um, all the basic information for all of these geocaches in in uh, the are within the parameters that you set up uh, they can be sent to you by email and you can extract them and put them onto your GPS device so I'm going to save this as a pocket query and this is the Daejeon area so I'm going to just call it Daejeon area um, I, I do this often I guess you would say so I, I put a query name in there so that when I receive it, I don't get confused as to which one it is. Now, it's Wednesday. It's Christmas Day here. It's Wednesday. But um, Geocaching's uh, um, headquarters is in Seattle, Washington. I think it's Seattle. 
which is in the Pacific time zone in North America, and it is still Tuesday there. It's uh, dinner time Tuesday, and it is uh, almost uh, 9 o'clock in the morning Wednesday, Christmas Day here. So you have to be careful. Uh, if you're not in North America, you have to be careful. I want this, uh, I want, I want this information now. I don't want to wait for another day. A special day. You can set it up so that it'll send you the f uh, send you these uh, files um, the same day every week. But I want it right now, and it's Tuesday in Seattle right now. So I'm going to click that. Uh, 500 caches, blah blah blah. Um, I don't care about container size, what kind of cache it is. I do not want it to include the ones that I have found or the ones that I own. I, I just I just want the ones I haven't found and the ones I don't own. But you don't have to click any of these if you don't want to. It doesn't change much. And I want within a radius of well I'm gonna say 10 kilometers. Uh, we use kilometers here in Korea. Um, there's only one country I know of that uses miles exclusively. <laughs> and I don't live there. I'm from there, but I don't live there. Uh, I, I just can't understand why people don't use metric. It is so much easier. Okay, come down here. Output to my email. That's my email. I don't care if you know my email. S tell me Merry Christmas if you if you see this. <laughs> I want this in a GPX format. It's because I don't know what a topographics LOC format is. I have no idea. But uh, I do know a GPS exchange format, GPX. Uh, include pocket query name in the download file because um, I might not see it right away and I, I don't want to forget what I'm doing. Uh, so when I see it, I'm going to see uh, this name up here. I'm going to see that, the day zone area, and I'll remember what I'm doing. All right, so submit the information. All right, my pocket query has been saved, and there are 83 caches within the parameters that I set for the pocket query. And here they are. I can also look at it on the map. All right. There they are. Now, how to get this from here to my GPS device. I'm going to go to my mail. All right, and it finally arrived. It it, it it often isn't instantaneous. This one took a minute to uh, get to me, but there it is. Daejeon area, my GPX file, and uh, come down here. I'm just going to download it. I'm going to download it to the desktop so that I keep track of it. And there it is. It's on my desktop. Is that it? That's it. All right. Uh, the easiest way to extract this is just to right-click and hold the right-click button down and drag it over and extract. Extract to the desktop, of course. That's the easiest. There it is. These are the files that were extracted. And something is eating up CPU on my computer for some reason. All right, let's take a look. Um, I am sorry that this is just uh, drag is lagging for something's happening. Is I've been practicing this all morning and it's been fine. And now when I, I actually want to make this video, my computer's lagging for something. I don't know. Anyway, there's my Garmin Montana. I want to open it and choose the GPX folder. And I'm really sorry about the lag. Um, maybe I can cut in some of the practice sessions I did earlier and uh, make it look a little smoother. 
So what I do is I take uh, what I extracted to the desktop here, the Dejon Area GPX, I just highlight them and I'm going to drag them <laughs> drag them to the Garmin GPX folder and it will copy there. And that's it. That's how you get the uh, that's how you get your GPX files onto your your Garmin. That's it. Easy peasy.